In geometry, sometimes we have to prove statements are true. And sometimes we have to disprove statements to show that they're false. Let me show you. To prove a mathematical statement, we use an orderly process called logical reasoning. And this orderly process is often a series of connected statements, where one statement leads to the next, which leads to the next, and so on, until we arrive at the statement we're trying to prove. And just like in a court of law, where a lawyer uses logical reasoning to prove that someone is innocent or guilty, there are specific rules that must be followed. And here's one of the main rules. Each statement you make in your proof must be able to be justified. That means you have to be able to state a reason for why it's true. And what might those reasons be? Good question. Well, here's the deal. Each statement in your proof must be true for one of the following reasons. Either it's given as a part of the problem, it's from a definition, it's from a postulate or mathematical property, or it's from a theorem that's already been proved. Now, take a good look at that list. Because if you can't justify each statement with one of those four types of reasons, then you can't use the statement in your proof. Often in geometry, we use a chart to help us keep our logical reasoning organized, putting the statements on the left and the reasons on the right. And let's check your memory here. What are those four things we can use as reasons? I'll give you a few seconds to see if you can name them. All right, so that's how you prove a mathematical statement is true. Logical reasoning with a series of connected statements. So now let's look at how to disprove a mathematical statement. That just means showing that it's false. Well, the good news is that to disprove a statement, all we need to do is show one example where it's false. That's it, just one, and that's called a counterexample. So let's try one here. Suppose we were given this statement, and we want to disprove it. Well, let's come up with one counterexample. If we draw this and label it like this, we can now legitimately say, here's one rectangle which is not a square. And because we showed one counterexample, we are finished. We have officially disproved the original statement. Or how about this statement? Let's see. Kind of seems true. If you square 3, you get 9. That's an increase. If you square 10, you get 100. If you square negative 5, you get 25. But look what happens when we use one half. If you square one half, that means one half times one half, you get one fourth, which is less than the one half you started with. So, since we've now found one counterexample, that means we've disproved the statement. It's not true. Got it? So let's wrap it up. How about a little word game here? See if you can fill in the missing letters. Ready? Mathematical proof uses and that involves a series of
statement needs a And those reasons must be one of these. You're doing fine. And finally, to disprove a statement, all you need is one Good. One counterexample. Well, that's it for today, proving with logical reasoning and disproving by using a counterexample. There you go. See you later.